So he's going to block Glistener Elf, go up to three counters, not one, uh, the other way around. And he's going to take two poison up to four. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> we knew what he meant. He only had one counter left, uh, one block left in him. Uh, so we're going to see a draw from Andy, and Andy's going to wear him down with his infect creature. He's going to play another land. It's an Inkmoth Nexus, which is the good land. Oh, thank you, Chris. Now I know, and that's what happened, it looks like. Uh, so a Deceiver Exarch is going to come down in the attack step. Um, tapping down probably Blighted Agent. Uh, I still think you definitely attack with both of the Glistener Elves, just to get the Spell Sky out of the way. Uh, you just have to do it. Uh, yeah, so he's going to get in there with both. And it looks like Josh is going to uh, take one Infect down to five. And he is going to Splinter Twin next turn if he has it. Uh, right now he doesn't have it, so he's hoping. He's going to pass. Uh, if Andy has a Vines or something, he can just stop it, though. So he drew the Splinter Twin, it looks like. And he has the Vines to Vastwood to give it protection. Or to give it Shroud. Uh, let me, I'm pretty sure that it's a legal play. I think Vines can say either player. So. Yeah. Yeah, that works. Uh, he's going to animate Ink Moth, attack with all four. He's going to eat three of it, going to seven Infect. And then that's if he has no... Yeah, he doesn't. Uh, so... Yeah, we're going to see a pass, and next turn, uh, Andy still needs a pump. I'm surprised Andy didn't have any pump spells. It looks like that spell sky wasn't too much of a problem after all. Uh, Josh is going to draw, and he gets it with Infect. Uh, Andy Martin gets it, and he might make top 8. Both of these players were 2-2. Two and two. They were playing for a top 8 position, and we will see very shortly if either of them made it. Well, obviously, uh, Josh won't make it because Andy got that match. But uh, we'll see if Andy gets into top 8, which... He is definitely hoping for as he drew his spell skites and won the spell skite war. Uh, we will see fairly soon. And I am going to take a quick break from the action. And once again, I'm sorry that because I don't have anybody here to talk to you while I go. Uh, I'm going to leave you with the Liliana background uh, with all of the information for our PTTQ Star City Games IQ tomorrow. It is modern format. And, uh, yeah, I'll be right back to find out if I can see top eight already. Uh, there's a chance because of how fast that ended, we might be able to get another match on camera really fast. So I'll be back right back.
right, so we have one more match going on uh, next door. <coughs> Excuse me. And I'm going to go ahead and take it off of this so you guys can see my beautiful mug. Oh, that's not how you do that. I guess it didn't really want me to be seen. Uh, so we have Tanner from round two, I believe. I think it was two when he played Christina. Um, no, it was actually round one. It was the second match in round one. Uh, we have Tanner playing against uh, a fellow named J Jonathan Reif, I believe, is his name. And Reif is playing a red-white or a Jeskai color control deck with ghostly prisons. And Tanner is, of course, playing twin. And he has the twin combo, but ghostly prisons in play to stop it. So I'm not sure how long that match is going to last. This is the last match going on, and I don't even know what game they're in. Um, so, yeah, I'm back over here. Uh... Just, re just, just reading the chat to get caught up. Um, oh, might have the result of that already. That would be ridiculously fast. Nope, it's the current standings. Alright, so right now, I don't know what it'll end up with this last match that needs to be reported, but right now, first place is Chucky Davis. Second place is Carter Newman. Third place is Brandon Harless. Uh, the only person we haven't seen on stream out of those three are Chucky so far. Uh, then we have... Uh, Ethan Epstein, who we've seen, uh, David Black, who we've seen, Michael Robinson, who we haven't seen this week, but we have seen, Jesse Hill, who we've seen this week, Cody Hill, who we have not seen. So out of the top eight, we have only not seen three of them. Hopefully, we're able to get Chucky uh, on cam this next round. That's what I really want to see, uh, because I don't know how often he'll be in town. I know, right, Charles? If you don't say it similar to Magneto, there's just not a point to say the name Charles. If your name's Charles, I am so sorry if I offended you. Uh, just like there's no point to say Kenny with, oh my, without, oh my god, they killed Kenny! You mean people. Uh, that's, I think, the quote, officially. Um, so, if you want to say uh, Chucky Davis's name, you have to call him Charles. Like Ian McKellen would say Charles in the X-Men movies. Um... <laughs> just like if you ever say Ra's al Ghul, you have to say it like Bane. You know, Ra's al Ghul. Um, so yeah, so once again we have Chucky Davis, and he is playing Jeskai Dragons. Jeskai Dragons! He's 302 or something. Um, I don't know if, what Dragons he's playing other than I think Thunderbreak region. I think that's the one that he definitely kept in from the standard Dragons. Uh, so he's playing that. Uh, Carter's playing Abzan Coco. Brandon Harless playing uh, Esper... Uh, Gifts. Ethan is playing Twin, which is Grixis. David Black is playing Fish. Michael Robinson, I don't know what he's playing this week. I know that uh, last week he played the Abzan Coco deck, but that's what Carter is playing this week, and uh, that's like they share decks. Um, Jesse's playing Elves, and also Cody is playing, I think he's pl still playing his Mardu Burn deck that he uh, debuted last week and uh, did well with. Uh, so he's sticking with it. Uh, right now we're just waiting on that last match once again it's Tana versus Jonathan and uh, trying to see who's gonna you know last out the other person uh, hopefully they do it fairly fast we only have 45 minutes roughly until rare drops closes and we would definitely I would definitely like to finish this before then if possible uh, since we have to be at the card shop 10 a.m. tomorrow hey that's a lot earlier than the 1 1 p.m. Uh, so tomorrow we're going to be opening up at 10. We're going to have our Star City Games Preliminary Pro Tour Qualifier, uh, Invitational Qualifier, all of that wrapped into one. Uh, first place is going to be $250 cash, um, Regional Pro Tour Qualifier Invite, and uh, the Invitational Invite, and five Open Series points. So if you're actually caring about your point total for, like, uh, I think they have a Rookie of the Year and all kinds of stuff on that now, uh, you definitely want to try to hit these, uh, for, or these uh, tournaments up as they are of incredibly high value for the price you pay in them, especially if you played in the FNMs tonight. You get $5 off if you wear your hometown hobby shirt. Uh, these are an investment to make, actually. Um, so tomorrow we're going to be playing Modern at noon. So if you are in the area and you are not busy, even if you are busy, you should come down. It's going to be a blast. Who's not? Who doesn't want to have fun? I'm having fun thinking about having fun. It's always fun. Um, so, next round, I'm definitely wanting to get Chucky on camera, and possibly either Cody or Michael Robinson, um, since we haven't seen them. Right now, actually, Cody and Chucky would be playing, uh, but we're, we still have one match left before we see what the final results are. 
Uh, so, if if that stays the same, that would be fantastic because it's two people we haven't seen so far, and uh, they're going to be on screen. Uh, so it's going to be a blast. I do wonder who's going to win that though: the uh, Dragon Control deck or the Burn deck. And he does have access to essentially a counterspell because you know it's just Silumgar Scorn, and that is basically counterspell in the Dragon's deck. Uh, sometimes it's bad for Spike, but for the most part, it's just counterspell. Uh, if you don't like fun, hey, that's okay. Everybody likes and dislikes different things. And uh, if you don't like to have fun, uh, honestly, I'm sorry, but it might not work out for you if you keep following us. Because we generally, you know, we like to have fun. Uh, we like to have a blast and try to make things exciting. I try my hardest. Sometimes I uh, stutter a lot and I, you know, use the word, uh, mm -mm, and stuff like that, but... Everybody does that kind of stuff. I'm just on camera doing it. Let's see if we still are waiting. Chucky and Cody on camera. Hey, exactly what I wanted. Uh, let's get this down. That's once again our info. And we're going to have... I Cody on the left, I believe. So it is pretty much who I wanted to be on camera, which works out fantastic. That means the top eight was basically locked. Um, that last result didn't matter too much. I do wonder who won out of it, though, because I want to know if he uh, was able to beat the ghostly prison. Oh, no. Andy Martin, that is not your name. Chucky Davis. Uh, and Davis is playing the coolest deck, his homebrew concoction, that hopefully if I have any kind of time I get to talk to him about it, regardless of win or lose. Um, because I haven't really been able to talk about it the past few days, I've been really busy with the Magic Origin stuff. So, uh, he told me about this deck a few days ago, and I didn't really have time to look at it, or help him with it, or do anything really. Um... Or give him any kind of suggestion. So I'm really hoping that I get to see what he wants it to do. I want to see the deck do that. Same with Cody. Both decks perform to their best abilities. That way we can see some real magic being cast. Uh, but here we are. And uh, hopefully they reset the score pads on the table. As we have Cody Hill on the left side of your screen. He is a local ringer that does fantastic at most tournaments he enters. Uh... And we have Chucky on the right, and he does the same, actually.